All right, folks, Mighty Care from Melvani with us today. We have one and only Thomas Lindbergh of The Lurking Fear as well as At The Gates. How are you doing, my friend? Very good, very good. Um, and I'm going to start right off the bat. You know, debut album, you know, always uh, a game changer for a new band. And when it comes to you guys, you've already been in the field for decades now. You know, how's the band feeling right now, keeping in mind that the first chapter will be unleashed in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's less um, less than a year <laughs> since the band started, you know, like actually since we first uh, started talking about it. So uh, it's been moving very quickly and uh, stuff happening all the time, you know, first like new songs popping up all the time and then shows and like, uh, you know, uh, artwork for the record recording. Everything has been moving so fast. So we were super excited and it almost feels a bit unreal that it's already happening, but uh, we are super psyched to get like the the feedback already now from uh, like the press stuff like that to hear what people think about the record. So yeah, we are super psyched. Awesome, man! And you don't seem to grasp the concept of rest. I mean, people are waiting for at the gates follow up, and here you are working on a new project with with Visitor Trial. I uh, you know the the main man obviously dubbed a sign of chain, which you will be releasing in September, and now you're releasing this album out of the voiceless grave and you're also a teacher how are you able to manage all that well it's just um you know i don't really like to uh, sit still so much i like to do stuff and uh, the creative um urge is uh, is more more than i s it's not something i only choose to do it's something i have to do i guess you know uh, i feel really restless and uh, almost a bit depressed when i'm not active in doing stuff so we started this uh, this band like just a few weeks after the last show on the at war with the reality tour we just had to do something new we just had to focus creatively again and uh, be part of a new uh, you know a new um, uh, creative atmosphere i guess totally because you know you guys sound you know the raw old school vibe and i'm sure you know you know you guys had this plan of probably returning to the genre at its root the the the, the death metal sound of it which is phenomenal i mean i'm not hearing any super technical sharing clean vocals orchestration what i'm hearing is honest death metal album a healthy dose of d beat great production and obviously your wonderful lovecraftian lyrics yeah well, i mean we we uh, really wanted to um bring back the essence of death metal uh, but the the whole idea was also to stay away from the you know old school for the sake of being old school thing we want to make to have something new again to bring something new to the table but combining old influences in a way that we felt felt a little bit fresh at least you know Absolutely, totally get that. And the, in the title, like, you know, the, Out of the Voiceless Grave and the sound I'm hearing, I hear a lot of thrash elements, I hear a lot of death, and they got the raw, gritty production side of it, an unpolished production, which really works well with the sound. So was it more like to keep it organic? And it makes me feel like I'm, I'm, I'm listening to the album by seeing you guys jam in a practice room. Yeah, we wanted to... to uh really get the band feeling for this one so that's why we stayed everybody in the studio for the whole process and really focused on a lot of uh, real sounds as you mentioned you know trying to uh, not make it crisp and clear but also not make it dirty just for the sense of sake of it more like this is how it sounds you know it's like as you say if you were in the room and i think that's um, how you make an honest album you know how, how you make it the uh, feel you know, uh, as it should feel for a listener uh, nowadays to stray away from the more polished sounds, I guess. Absolutely. I had a lot of, uh, you know, the, the, the influences coming in from, from all the members. And at the end of it, it's always uh, a, an, an honest album. And I feel that that is a passion in each and every track. All the 12 tracks has that passion and aggression in it that I feel it's impossible to replicate. I mean, you guys have executed it really well. You guys have written it well. Was this an idea to not write many songs, neither write less, just have a good balance of brutality in an old school way? Well, I mean, we have more songs, actually. We uh, just decided 
like a month before we went into the studio to strip to strip it down and focus on the songs uh, that we shoot for the record. There were more ideas floating around, but we felt that some of them needed, needed more time to mature. So we left them at the raw stage and moved into the process of, uh, you know, completing these 12 tracks more like specifically, as you say. But also, I think a lot of it comes down to that we have exactly the same reference points. We have a lot of experience in, in uh, arranging songs. Uh, so a lot of uh, stuff that usually takes time went really smooth. And therefore, we could focus more on the, the emotion of the songs and the execution of them in detail, in, in a different way. Absolutely. And, you know, you are involved. Adrian is involved. And, you know, I'm sure there are people out there who are kind of going to compare this album with, let's say, the, the At The Gate Sound, which, you know, they shouldn't because these two are two different entities. But is the band kind of prepared for this sort of a comparison? Because, as you know, you know, it's bound to happen. The Lurking Fear are not melodic, they're not modern, but still there are fans who are going to compare. Yeah, I guess, I guess. I mean, we we made this album a lot just for ourselves, uh, in a way, and uh, for the people that are into this kind of uh, death metal that we did on this record. So, uh, if someone expects uh, this to sound like At The Gates, I guess they're in, in for a surprise, but... Uh, we didn't do it for them, you know, we did it for ourselves mostly, you know, so it's kind of, um, how can I, how, how can I put it? Um, we needed to do this, basically. We needed this outlet. And now, uh, after uh, this album is released, we're focusing more and more on the on the next Dead Gates um, release too, you know, and but then we have had this kind of out of our system a little bit and we can focus on in a different creative aspect. So it goes perfectly hand in hand, you know, uh, at least the process for that has been inspired by like the general creative uh, curiosity of the lurking fear. So uh, it actually brought something else to that table too. Absolutely. And your vocals are as always fabulous to the point, you know, it, it brings in that, that, that animal in you, which, which is really good to hear. That's the, the, the signature Thomas Lindbergh vocals and lyrics again, like I mentioned at the beginning, the Lovecraft and I love the way you sit and write these, you know, these verses. How was the experience this time, keeping in mind that this is a new outlet? So maybe just try to experiment here and there with, with different uh, styles. Well, I guess, you know, both uh, vocal delivery and, and the lyrics, um, I always in any band or to any song, whatever I do creatively, I always let the song uh, decide in which direction to take it. Uh, for this record, the, the songs had a little bit of a lower end to it than uh, in At The Gates, so the, the vocals naturally became a little lower in tone, uh, therefore maybe it sounds a little bit raw in that sense. And also the lyrics uh, had to portray a different kind of emotion than I do with At The Gates, so they went into the more unnerving, unsettling, uh, mood and therefore I used uh, the Lovecraft uh, universe or like words as, as an extra filter, to, a layer to put on top of my lyrics to, to create, create that feeling. Fantastic and I love the second half of the record where actually you guys uh, prove yourself to be a formidable force. I mean I hear Iron Maiden inspired melody in Teeth of the Dark Plains and a good developed and modern sounding the cold, you know, the cold jaws of death and obviously the wing delt is already out makes me feel that you know there's a lot more in this album if fans give it it's kind of a grower as well you know it hit, it hits you right at the right at the bat but at the same time grows as you keep listening to it well the idea is that it's like really like uh, the songs have a different uh, every song has a different soul to it on this record uh, and they are really songs in in the sense in the old school <laughs> way of saying song you know uh, so they have different moods too. Uh, I guess we put a lot of the more, well, not progressive, that's a big word, but like the more intricate songs or whatever, like with more influences from other stuff on the side B, uh, when people have really got already got familiar with the basic sounds of the band, then you can get to the, the more deep parts of the band on, on side B. And that, therefore, maybe you are right that it is a grower, you know, is this still uh, gives something else uh, ever listen, even if it's, so to say, just a death metal record. <laughs> Indeed. 
you know, at this point of time, obviously the focus is on, on the Lurking Fair. Where does At The Gates stand at this point of time? Uh, we are in the writing process uh, for the next record. It's going really well. Uh, very focused, very uh, fired up, uh, very inspired. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going really well, I have to say. It's uh, actually going a bit faster than I thought it was going to be and uh, good flow. I guess maybe for myself, you know, going straight from the creative side of the looking fear, straight into that, the gates made it like I didn't have the time to go down. So I guess I just continued the creativity. So a little bit of an, a little bit of an, on a roll, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to hear. And obviously with, with Anders, not part of the band anymore. And he's been, you know, the, the main contributor side when it comes to writing songs. How's, uh, I, do, I kind of feel that the band has now become more of a collaborative force. Well, well, yeah, in a way, yeah, we, we're, we're our unit, uh, we are all very eager to, to get this done. Uh, the one that has stepped up so far is, uh, of course, Jonas, um, who wrote about 40% of both At War With The Reality and Sort of Soul, so he stepped in his main songwriter now, and uh, the stuff that he's put on the table so far is amazing, basically, it's uh, really captures exact the essence of what at, what at the gates is i mean at what we were, it was a good album for us a strong album but it's uh, i think this one is more focused on just being us you know and that it, i can really feel that in those songs so far awesome man and yeah, i want i want to touch the topic of of the 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 impact you guys have made on the scene, obviously, you slaughtered the soul, and then with, with the, the expectations which were met by at war with reality, what direction is the band looking at right now, musically? Because the sound of 95 to 2014 to now, 2017, it's, it develops, it changes over the period of time. Do you Have you guys planned what areas are you going to touch, what, where are you going to focus more musically? Well, yeah, there's been a lot of discussions and, uh, as I said, a very creative, inspired atmosphere right now. Uh, I would say that we are, again, in, in, a, in a sense, as we did with that world reality, trying to really grasp what is, what At The Gates is. Uh, maybe a little bit more, again, even further back to the roots a little bit to see, you know, what aspects of uh, At The Gates we could... Uh, put in the at the gates of today, um, you know, and make it like a whole record, so to say, to to present us as where we are now. Uh, but I think there will be some surprises for people in in a very good way. Um, so far, it's a very coherent, very strong album, very strong songs. So, um, but I will uh, when it comes closer, I can give you more hints about absolutely, music. absolutely. I mean, are you guys targeting it? I'm sure because I want to see Lurking Fair on, on stage, you know, touring as well. Yeah, yeah, we, we are already playing shows this August and have a, a couple of shows already booked for September, October already here in Europe. So we're, we are working with a, with a booking agency that are working a bit side to side with the one with At The Gates. So we uh, try to avoid uh, conflicts, logistical conflicts. But I mean, I, I would see possibilities and uh, not... Uh, not problems in this. Awesome. So next year would be the target for the next At the Gates album. Yeah, the, the plan is to have it out uh, sometime uh, during the first part of 2018. Yeah. Lovely man. So if you had to sum up the record out of the voiceless grave in a sentence, what would you say? Um, I would say that it is the record trying to bring back the unnatural, unnerving uh, emotions uh, of the early death metal and bring it to uh, the modern day. Absolutely, man. Totally. You know, I, I really love the way you put forward. To... Good luck with the release, man. You know, I, I just can't wait for fans to you know, listen to it. You know, this, this is an album that they need to listen to and obviously support the band. So good luck, man. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Take care, buddy. I'll catch you soon. Take care, man. Bye. Bye.